Hi everyone, I'm Ivano Landini and today I will show you how to turn any logo into a balloon. Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna need is to create a new general file, so let's go. Then we're gonna need to delete our default cube and our point light. Then we're gonna need to import our SVG logo. You can choose whatever logo you want but if you want to follow this tutorial i'm gonna leave you in the description a link to download for free our nike logo in svg format let's start by importing our svg so here we have it as you can see now it's a curve so we're gonna need to turn it into a mesh so let's go to object convert mesh but now, as you can see, we have something wrong with our mesh. So in order to get it fixed, we're gonna do the following things. So first, we're gonna need to enable our geometry wireframe so that we can see our mesh in our object mode. Then we're gonna need to go to the modifiers and we're gonna need to add a decimate modifier. Let's go to planner and let's change our angle limit to something like 0 0.5 then we're gonna need to apply this then we're gonna need to extrude up a little bit of logo something like this will work just fine then we're gonna need to add another modifier our remesh modifier that we're gonna change it to smooth go to octree depth of eight and we're gonna smooth shading so now that we have it done we can hide our geometry wireframe we can delete our SVG material the default material of the SVG and as you can see now we start to see something the next thing we're gonna need is to get our cloth modifier to get the balloon effect. So let's go to the cloth, go all the way down to pressure, then we're gonna need to enable our custom volume. Let's change our pressure to 30, our target volume to something like 3.3, and our pressure scale to something like five. So now that we have it done, let's go to the cache let's change it to something like five and we're gonna bake it so now that we have baked it we're gonna change our end frame to five and we're gonna select what type of balloon effect we want as you can see we can easily even animate it but for now we're gonna need to do something like this just perfect so the next thing we're gonna need is to add a subdivision modifier let's turn it to two and here we have our perfect balloon shape so now we can continue by changing our render engine into cycle go to experimental gpu compute let's turn up our denoiser choose optx if you have an RTX graphic card. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need is to create a vertical split. Let's hide old guy and let's turn to cycle. So the next thing we're gonna need is to create a plane that we're gonna turn down a little bit, something like this will work just fine. Then we're gonna need to get some lights over there so let's create some of them so let's start with the first area light let's go to light area light and let's change the position so location will be 0 0.7 0 0 0.08 and for the rotation just change the epsilon rotation to 87 and here we are. The power of the light will be 10 watt. Then we're gonna need to duplicate our light. 
and we're gonna change some values. So let's change our location to minus 0 0.1, epsilon to 0 0.7, and z to 0 0.43, 44, sorry. Then our x rotation will be 50 degree, epsilon rotation will be 70 degree, and the z location will be 172 degree. So here we are. The last thing we're gonna need is to change our power to something like 0 0.5, and here we have something on the screen. The next thing we're gonna need is to change our word properties by changing our default background color to an HDRI. In order to do it, I'm gonna leave in the description the link to download the, the exact same HDRI that I used. If you want to change it, feel free to use another one. You can download uh, for free from HDRI Heaven, so go to download it. 2K will be just fine. And once you have downloaded, let's go to change it. So let's click down here. Let's change it to environment texture. Let's click on open and let's get our Brown Photo Studio 2K. So as you can see now, we have our perfect HDRI. So the last thing we're gonna change for the scene is to get our camera on the object. So let's change some values. So let's first grab our camera. Let's change our focal length to something like 130. Then we're gonna need to change the values by changing the X location to minus 0 0.2, Epsilon to 0 0.15, Z to 1.03, and the rotation will be 0, 0, and minus 17.3 7, degree. Here we are. So now that we have our camera perfectly on our Nakia logo, we can go with the last part of this tutorial, so the materials. I'm gonna show you how to create a very realistic plastic material in an easy way. So the first thing we're gonna need is to create our new material. Let's rename it to pink plastic. Then we're gonna need to go to shading. And here we are. So the first thing we're gonna need is to delete our principal BSDF. Then we're gonna need to get some notes. So let's drag it a light node, light path. Then we're gonna need a geometry path. Then we're gonna need to get our color ramp node. Then we're gonna need another color ramp node. Then we're gonna need a mapping node. Okay, then we're gonna need our glass BSDF, our transparent, BSDF and our glossy BSDF. In order to join them, we're gonna need a mix shader and an add shader. So we can start. So now the first thing we're gonna need is to change our point list into the vector, the vector into the color of the vector, and the vector of the mapping will get into the factor of the color ramp. This color ramp node will be our place to choose the color of our plastic. So let's drag our control in all these nodes. Let's now bring it down here. Then we're gonna need to get like this. And here we have, and here we have something to see. So now, if we change 
a color down here we start to see something but we're gonna get it later another thing that we're gonna need is to add some math nodes so let's add some of them we're gonna need four of them so we're gonna need to add the node one maximum node and one multiply mode okay so let's now bring the shadow ray into the add node the diffuse ray into the add node the result into the other head node and the glossy into the other part of the add node then we're gonna need to drag our results into the multiply then we're gonna need to bring our shadow ray into the maximum value and our reflection ray into the other part of the maximum node so let's now bring the result into the multiply and let's now bring the last result into the factor so now that we have it done we're gonna need to change some values down here so let's change our roughness to 0 0.2 our IR add to 1.15 and then we're gonna need to change our roughness to something like 0 0.1 and here we are we can start to see a very very good plastic material but we are not done another thing that we're gonna need is to change our color ramp colors in order to follow this tutorial, you can copy the hex code that I'm gonna write. So let's start. Our first one will be BB54AF. The second one will be this. Okay. So the last thing we're gonna need is to change our color ramp position down here, so something like this and something like this. Okay, and here we are with our perfect plastic material. So now that we have it done, the last material that we're gonna need is the plain material so let's call bg blue okay and for that the work will be very simple just change our base color to this let's now bring our metallic to something like 0 0.1 let's change our roughness to 0 0.25 and here we are so another thing that we're gonna need is to change our color management and change our look from none to very high contrast so now that we have it done we can just hit render and see the result So now that we have our render done, we can go with the last part of this tutorial. So let's go to compositing. Let's click on use nodes. Let's now create a new vertical split. Let's select our image editor. Let's click down here. Let's go to render result so that we can see what render will looks like with our compositing in real time so let's now drag in a glare node let's change it to fog glow and we're gonna get a perfect result with these values so one of the things that we can add is a little of bright contrast let's bring our contrast to something like 2.5 and here we are without perfect render 
So here we are at the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a comment down below. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And we will see in the next video. Bye bye.